everybody, welcome to the Wild Dog Way. I'm Jessica. Today's video is going to be a back to school haul. That's right, it's back to school season. Now, if you haven't checked out the plan with me video yet, you might wanna do that first, which can be found right here, because in that video, I take you through how I plan our homeschool year, how I pick our goals for the homeschool year, which is going to have a huge influence over the things that you see in this week's back to school haul videos, because a lot of the concepts that I want us to master are the reason I bought a lot of the things I bought. So if you haven't checked out that video yet, you might wanna start there. But now let's just go ahead and get into the stuff. So you heard me say that our one thing this year was logic and critical thinking, so we will start there. The first thing I grabbed was the travel game set. Now we have the big one, which really isn't that big, they're just cards, you know, regular card sizes. But I thought having the small travel one would be really, really good to just be able to throw in my purse or our beach bag or whatever, wherever we're going so that we would have something that traveled well with us to still be able to practice logic and critical thinking. I also picked up a game called Brain Flip as well as Sherlock Holmes, A Race to Solve the Mystery. This one seemed like a lot of fun because it's a fast game of deduction where everyone is a suspect until proven innocent. It kind of reminded me of Outfox, which was one of our absolute favorite games when Emily was younger. Then I also grabbed Cat Stacks. This is a single player logic puzzle type game. Um, there is a Cat Stacks and a Dog Stacks and I believe one more, but Emily is obsessed with cats. So that seemed like the perfect one for her. There's 48 different puzzles in there. And then I also got Logic Dots. So this is Dice, Dots, and Deduction. You're trying to figure out where a specific clue, clue, cube is and they give you clues to do that. Um, it just looks like it would be a lot of fun. So you have all these clues on the card. And then we love smart games um, and we really, really love Canoodle from um, Think Fun. And so these looked a lot similar, the IQ games. And I love that they're small and portable and travel. So I just grabbed IQ stars and IQ arrows. Honestly, there was no rhyme or reason to me picking the IQ ones I picked other than these two were the cheapest on Rainbow Resources. Um, a lot of the games play very similarly. There's like puzzles and logic to them and you just kind of do different things with the pieces. And so I just grabbed the two that were the most affordable. I'm sure they're all as amazing as like the, all the canoodles are. So it really wasn't like there was any rhyme or reason. Um, another thing that you guys heard me talk about if you watched that planning video was math. I talked about wanting to do money and fractions. So I did pick up a few resources for that. The first one was Quick Picks not just a money game. Now this is mainly dealing with change. I also thought we could probably use this for logic as well because it's fast paced. And you have to be able to look at the card with the change on it and be able to very, very quickly figure out you know, what the amount actually is. So I thought that would be good for that. Um, and then I picked up these two for some hands on manipulatives for fractions. We have fraction bricks and the fraction segment, which are the circles. I really wanted her to be able to see the fractions in different forms. And so I thought the fact that one was like a bar versus one being a circle would be really, really helpful for her to be able to see and manipulate, you know, what the equivalents are and adding and subtracting. I really love hands-on manipulatives for math. So I definitely had to have that one. And then I grabbed this book um, for fraction dice games. So it's just a book full of different games that you can play with dice that will help teach fractions. And since we love game schooling, I thought I need to have that one on hand. And now this next one was actually not listed on my goals for this year, but I may go back and put it on the goals, but either way it was on sale and I couldn't pass it up. And it's order of operation dice. So it's just a tube of all of the different dice that you can use order of operation for. And I'm sure order of operation is something that we'll touch on um, this year anyway, and I love having hands-on resources for math, so I went ahead and grabbed that. I also grabbed two little writing sets for her, um, the Unicorn and the Mermaid, to add to our Mail Time Monday kit. It just comes with like envelopes and writing stationery and all kinds of stickers and stuff, so I just thought that would be fun. And then Poetic Forms was something we were going to work on as well, so I grabbed the book Pizza 
Pigs and Poetry. It's um, Jack Proletsky. We absolutely love his poems. So this is a book about how to write a poem. And since we really, really love his poetry, it seemed like it made the most sense for us to learn how to write poems from him. And then last year I got um, poetry books, different forms of poetry books by Brian Cleary, and they were perfect. They were so much fun for us to use um, to learn about different poems and to kind of practice it. But this year I wanted something a little bit more detailed that went into a little bit more of like the how and the why, not just examples of it. So I grabbed these read, recite, and wrote, and write, sorry, um, poets workshop books. So we have all of the different ones. We have the concrete poems, um, the sequins, the free verse, the haikus, limericks, list poems, and then narrative poems. And again, this just has kind of everything. So it's like, what is a narrative poem? Writing a narrative biographical, po biographical poem, a narrative mystery poem, um, a fantasy narrative poem, revising your poem, and then performing a poem. And there's just all kinds of you know help for how to do that. So I really wanted to have those on hand. Now, whether we'll get through all of these or not, I don't know. This may be something that we'll just do a few this year and keep going. I will let you guys know as we update you with um, our quarterly um, plans for homeschool. The other few things that I grabbed were games that were not necessary for my goals for the year, but I also like to have things on hand for other things. Um, and we have the flags of the world in this similar type of game, and Emily loves it. So I picked up the Wonders of the World version as well as the Animals of the World version. Um, that way we can get exposed to some of that. And then I thought this looked like a lot of fun. It's called a wordsmith. And so you are physically building your words during this game. So I thought this would work for vocabulary and spelling, maybe even some handwriting and any way I can ever sneak in some of that. I'm all about it. So that is what I picked up from Rainbow Resources for our fifth grade homeschool year.